Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Robert Windish. He's from Impside over in Europe. And we're going to get into talking about using WordPress in multi multiple languages, particularly for learning management system applications, but also in general. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thank you. Nice for finally being here. I I saw the podcast. I be totally honest. I did not have time to listen to the podcasts. I just like uh, typed in there here and there. But um, I'm so happy to um, to be here because I like you are a known person. So that's why I'm happy happy to have a conversation with you. Awesome. Well, you're a known person too. I've seen the hat for years, so it's it's great to finally connect. Yeah, for... I, I try to. I try to like with this. I try to make it happen to, that people <laughs> really uh, um, have a visible like. Most people going like the guy, the guy with the head, and even even uh, in WordCamp US, um, uh, Matt came up to me at the at the bar like where we were, where all people were, and were like, "Oh, I, I saw I saw you here," and I imagined that WordPress people are here. So I was like, "Okay, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm the, like, the unique identifier where the WordPress people are in <laughs> in a very big uh, crowded uh, um uh, where very big uh, uh, area as as the WordCamp US was." Yeah, as a quick side note, I love walking around the city or wherever and being like, there's a WordPress person. You can kind of tell you get your yeah. cues and stuff. It's awesome. But you definitely have a good prop or part of your shtick going there. For the uninitiated, tell us about uh, at a high level using WordPress in multi languages. What's what's going on? Like, what are the pieces that people need to think about? So there are um, there's different approaches. Uh, first of all, uh, it's 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 it depends. It's the answer that everybody hates when when I say that because it's really about um, what do you want to achieve and what is the audience and what is the um, level of um, of depth you want to go into. So, for example, um, the White House. Let's say say that way. The White House currently has English and Spanish as 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 um, possibility languages, and they are using multi site. Um, to separate the sites from each other to make sure they are as fast as as um, as, uh, as close to core as possible. Um, so and then you have like normal, let's say normal sites who are not like that kind of like um, I need to survive like a hit of a few hundred thousand visits a second. Um, uh, that are normal sites who just someone wants to um, distribute content to several languages. So they then use a currently use a plugin, uh, one one of the plugins to um, really make sure that they can translate the content and can also can translate everything surrounding this content. Because the problem with multilingual WordPress sites is it's not done with like simply translating like uh, posts and pages. Like just think back in the times when we had widgets, or for people currently using the the classic editor. I feel so sorry for you to still dealing with widgets. Um, I hated this and I was so happy when they were gone. So um, so that's so many, there are so many content surrounding um, in WordPress that is um, that is a different thing than WordPress like posts and pages. So there's different solutions who can deal with that. And then you have like plugin translations, you have like seam translations, and you have all the all the let's say the hot mess that goes into making a WordPress site run. There's plugins who cannot be translated because the, the developer said like, meh. And, and so there are so many different ways you can you can uh, pinpoint that, that um, there's, sorry, no easy to like, this thing will solve all your problems. It's really like the plugin space right now and um, there is on the horizon a, a solution in core. Let's use an example like uh, French Canada, Quebec, if if somebody it's really common there to have a french and an english version how should somebody approach that with their website like what's the basic version of that would you recommend two sites uh, yeah it's really um, it's really yeah. about the um so <clears throat> like simply separating the the multi site from the single site approach it's like um um for the for the single for the single site as we like normal sites as normal people would call them but for us as a multi site uh, um, um, um solution people we tend to use this as a normal version so from a from a normal installation of wordpress you simply put um, a translation plugin on i can name names if you want to but yeah, I, sure. I yeah. um the, so currently there is like a wpml uh, um and you have like um 
uh, Weglot and Polylang as as solutions you can you can you can take there, and um, all of them has ups and downs that you need to like simply be um, accustomed to. You need to like see okay how can you translate a seam then. What what is the what is the part where you in the in the design want to switch over to different to different content? For example, if you um, want to have user generated comments, for example, or what is the where are the forms? Like what what is the as I said before, like what is the plugin output? Is is the site ready for that? Where do we need to translate that? Is it was it translated by the plugin author? And if you want to have let's say um, really fast performance sites, and you are okay with the extra work that needs to go in there then you can really let those two languages have two different sites and a multi-site because with multi-site, they share like the, um, the plugins. They can have a different seam by simply uh, uh, using the multi-site feature. They can have different plugins there and they also have to uh, have the ability to um, have different users work on them. So you can have people who are uh, fluent in France and French, but not like having good chops in English. They can all only have access to the French side, and the mm -hmm. other one have only access to the English side. So the benefit for that is that you don't need to like um, tell people don't touch the other language. To, you, they simply can't, and they can like um, have their own language like progressing, and they can also like then connect stuff with each other. So that's the that's the possibility with multi-site. But again, like this comes with the extra amount of like the first is you need to understand what you're doing because it's it's a different it's a different um, um, starting uh, value you're having because with multi-site some things are changing in WordPress in terms of like you need to understand that this is now a different site you're not switching over with with simply on a on the press of a uh, of a of a flag and you're back and you're not switching over because you need to switch sites for that so there is upsides to this but there's also like the added um, uh, let's say extra work of understanding what uh, what multi-site entails but that comes with um, the best benefit is um, all the current WordPress um, translation plugins, they need to bend WordPress core. So they need to make sure, for example, when you would hit a, a um, um, tr French translated page, for example, for, with, your, with your example in Canada, when you would hit, uh, and French would be the translated page, then you're basically hitting in WordPress like a 404. Like it basically it hits and goes like someone needs to jump in there and going like, hey, if this URL part comes up, like, please ask me. And then like the plugins go like, hey, this is this thing. You It's not a normal post content. That is something we made up. So they need to like make sure that WordPress knows what to do. And the benefit of um, having this in, a, in the multi-site is um, you don't need to do anything because when you hit in a French version of the page, that's the French multi-site and it's a normal page there. So simply WordPress uh, um, starts up and there's no extra plugin going in there and making sure that the site content is, is really the content you were, you were requesting. So that's the benefit uh, um, of having that. And now imagine like um, having this translation feature on and having a few thousand hits uh, um, a minute or a second, then you really want to have extra, like every extra not queries thrown you want to have that you want to have the least uh, um, queries in wordpress flying around the least like php uh, uh, memory used and all of that is the that is the goal you want to have with a with a high performance site the question is are you doing a high performance site are you doing the site that you really want to have a um, control over that was that needs to be like um like let's say enterprise uh, uh, ready or that's like really uh, the, the customer is someone who really values like um, like not doing shortcuts and stuff. So then uh, this all comes in handy. But if you have a like a normal uh, um, user site that they then take over and they really uh, um, are on their own and they need to like work with that, then sometimes the the, um, the, the, the other plugins are more useful like the normal translation plugins. And how do the normal translation plugins work? Are they like, I guess, what's the difference between that and just letting somebody's browser handle it? Yeah, it, the, because there is, it's everything is a is a plugin solution. So everything in there needs to be a plugin because Core currently cannot handle that. So even our solution is a plugin. So that the one, the one on the White House is our plugin, and that's the like that's one of the plugins on the multi on the multi site world that you can use and. 
currently it needs to be a plugin. So for example, but what what for example what our plugin does simply help you connect things because it's still multi-site, but you need to tell you need to tell the search engines that you have a French translation of the content. So if, if when it's when it hits the French content and goes like, are you cheating? Do you want to trick me? That you can tell the search engines, no, 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 on purpose. Like this is the English version of that, and they both are connected with each other. Very cool. Very cool. Um, tell us more about the White House project and what your plugin does on there. So um, um, as, a, as a European uh, agency, uh, a spoiler, we were not involved with the, okay. with the White House project because it's the White European. House project. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but um, our solution is like, let's say in the, in the, um, in the um, enterprise agency world and in, in that kind of like professional world, um, our solution is the go-to solution for, for, um, um, uh, for translations. Um, and so when the White House was approaching WordPress VIP to go like, hey, can we, like, we want to host the site that was the transition site. So it was built back better. So the transition site, um, as you do not want to get DDoSed as the future White House, you look for one of the best solutions in the market and the market, like, they're already, like, used to getting attacks from everywhere. So that's why they, um, they reached out to them. And so when they were going like, and we want to do translations, like then the WordPress VIP was like, we have one solution for you, that, but you can choose from that. You have this one solution, but you can, you are free to choose this one thing. And so they choose then um, our solution and we got a like cryptid uh, message in our, in our Slack. Can someone like help them? Or like, can someone give us some insights into multilingual press for a certain thing? And we were like, that's a very unspecific request. And, uh, and so uh, then later we were like, ah, okay, that's, that was the White House. So, um, so it really is a, is a, is a normal, is a normal WordPress site. Um, it's just like the, the, um, the doing or, and, and like solution is simply um, from a, from a, like from an enterprise perspective and because performance and um, scalability is one thing like you wanted, you want to have as, as, this very prominent website. Um, that's why they um, they were choosing like this solution to really have um, everything they can they can they could have um, um, focused on performance. Very cool. Let's look at the LMS niche particularly. One of the challenges they have is video content. It's not text content. You can't really translate a video. I mean, may maybe AI is getting there, but if if our learning platform has a lot of video content, how, how should somebody approach multilingual? Should we do the multi-site or how should we think about that? The question then is how separated do you want to show that to the audience? So if you want to have like a, um, so that, that's why it's the question is how, how you are um, like streamlining that and how uh, as one of the platform do you want to present that to the audience? If you want to have like, one URL and like everything is mixed in there and then you can filter that, then you basically answered your question because then, then you don't want to have the separation or otherwise you need to like get everything then to back together. But if you want to have like focused on several languages and you want to have people like experience this language and everything on the website is then in this language. So it's the same thing as you can imagine like the switching over to the content and then um, for example, depends on how much the translation plugins can deal with your extra content and how they are ready to like separate these things in front end. Um, that's the question you need to you need to like uh, be able to answer like how can you do how can you do the separation? And um, if you want to be like um, fully um, seen like as a as a separate cosmos for for those languages. Depends on how much content you basically having, I would guess. I have a technical question for you that comes up sometimes with permalinks. Mm -hmm. If somebody's um, Italian, they call it a course is a cursi and they want mm -hmm. permalinks changing, but you can't really have separate permalinks on the same site, right? That's not even possible. I don't know. Like it, it really depends um, if you, because if you already bending WordPress as a translation plugin, why not bend it more? 
And yeah. I, I don't I don't mean it in a, in a in a bad way. Like that's the that's the that's the card that like all the plugins got de dealt with while we are snickering in the corner, going like, "That's no problem. Simply have your have your Slack translated because we don't like it's a it's a different site. So if you if the site is Italian and you have tra Italian translation of your Slack, then your Slack is Italian and everything is fine. Like that's that's us of the multi site solution snickering in the corner. While the poor, poor like translation plugins need to deal with like, hey, as you said, like it's not possible to uh, to translate um, to have multiple slacks there on on one page. Again, like it, it's possible. You just need to do extra work to make this happen. I'm going totally like uh, uh, flying blind here. I'm not sure if they currently do this, but technically, if you have a rewrite um, doing this for one URL, you can also do it. You could practically do it for all translations i'm not sure if they're doing that because again like me sneakering in the corner going like haha not our problem i know that's very that's very not helpful what i'm saying <laughs> no i just i think it's you're bringing up a good point which is it's complex and there's how much do you want to bin wordpress or just do a separate site yeah tell us about the phase four vi vision for wordpress and if you could just go over Phase one, two, and three real yeah. quick so people know with the context. Yeah. By the way, uh, for everyone who's currently going like, what phases? Congratulations, you just won a homework. So there is a state of the world. Uh, it's the um, let's state of the union of the WordPress ecosystem. And it's done by Matt Malenweg the end of the year. So currently, we currently, while uh, recording that, we do not have a, a state of the world this year. So your homework is watched it from last year or wait till the end of the year to watch it this year. This simply gives you an insight into where the roadmap of WordPress is, where WordPress is like uh, um, currently at, and what was the year and what is the outlook we're having. So that's the easiest way for you to be like up to date, what is happening in the ecosystem. And then you can like show, to, show off to other people how awesome you know WordPress. So that's a, that's a, that's a simply a gimmick you, you get with that. So um, the phases of, of the, the blog editor were introduced uh, when WordPress 5.0 was released. And the first phase is to introduce the blog editor, uh, Gutenberg, people know this also as Gutenberg, introduce that to the WordPress ecosystem. The phase two was, bringing the block editor into front end that what we now call um, full site editing and site editing so that people can really be able to edit the whole experience and not only uh, the post and the page content and the widgets by the way and phase three is then collaboration so basically that you just imagine google drive and like um, those kind of like real-time experiences and not going like a Paula just uh, um, is editing this post. Do you want to take it over or do you want to go back to the main site? So basically imagine uh, what would WordPress backend look like if someone would create it right now. And it's simply um, a, like a editing. And what phase three also introduces is workflows. So when someone changes something, then a base workflow system is thought to be in there for other like um, events to happen after that. Just like to make sure that someone, if they change something, also think about what other things they need to touch. And this comes in handy for phase four because for phase four is bringing multilingual to core. Um, and the workflows are a very integral part of that because as Matt said it in the Q&A last year in San Diego for WordCamp US, he was like, um, all WordPress, all multilingual translation plugins are doing it wrong. Because what he was missing is, he said, um, the workflows are missing. So if someone trans, uh, change, uh, changes uh, um, something in the English side, if we stay on the Canadian example, if someone changes something on the English side, then on the French side, something might need to happen. If someone changes like a very important detail on the on the English side, then on the French side, this might also need to change. So that's why um, um, the workflows are in phase three and that lead to phase four and making then WordPress going multilingual in core. And now is the question that you like, just ask it. Like, or, or, I, or I answer you the question that you just want to tell me. Do you want to go forward? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 
That's when. perfect. That's perfect. when is the question you want to ask? Like when is this? Oh, like, everybody yeah, yeah. goes like, okay, when, when, when is, when is multilingual? As a software person myself, I, I tend to avoid the when because we don't know sometimes. But I mean, do you have an answer? Of when? Um, I have a rough guess. So okay. um, if every state of the world is a time in WordPress when the pressure is getting high for the for the developers to deliver something that WordPress is really like uh, um, like leaping forward. Yeah. That means for me that um, um, phase two, phase three, if we get it done, might be in two years. In my like like just yeah. imagine rough guessing here. So it would be the um, the state of the world in two years where we have phase three maybe concluded. And that means, like, it uh, depends on how fast we get the multilingual then in core, because, like, one of the big things were really, like, the blog editor in the past, in the past iterations, and, like, block-based themes and all of that uh, surrounding this. So that means, for me, phase four is maybe f four to five years, uh, like, uh, uh, like, away, because uh, we want to deliver something really good, and we need to really make sure that we that we nail it on landing when we do multilingual and core because we cannot re simply revamp the content that we let people create then like go like going a release and going like ah shoot we have the wrong data structure let's revamp all the content that is currently translated already in wordpress so that's why we need we need to uh, nail the landing so that's why for me it's like um um like four maybe four years is for me the the approach um, again, like I have no connect, I have no connection in guessing when this is. My yeah. guessing is best as yours, but for me, it's like um, from the experience in the ecosystem, like that is a for me a good timing. And if we get it earlier, yay! Nice. I, I have a question which I don't know if you have much take on or not, but in addition to multilingual, it is multi currency. So if you're selling training, as an example and you want it to be sold in different currencies depending upon the language, how would one do that? Um, so the easy answer, just give it our own site. Yes, yeah. I know. Like I blow this then out of proportion then you because you need to have your store and multiple sites. Right. Um, but currently it's the, it's the like you can have like um, um, currency trans, trans, translation. So you can have like in the checkout, you have a user like have their own currency and then on the checkout you're going like, this was a fun ride and please now pay in dollar. And, right. and that's, that's, that's a possibility. And you just need to see like if people jump off your store or not. So that's why it's a, it's a really um, um, like we tend to, for, for example, for our own products, we tend to simply have a surprise multi-site and have simply uh, multiple uh, WooCommerce instances there to, to simply like deliver exactly to those, to those users. I think that's a big takeaway and it's what we recommend too, that if you're going to do a separate site or new, a separate language is basically a separate site. If you really want to deliver the best experience, yeah. it's kind of, I think of it kind of like, um, you go to a menu, you get a menu in some countries and there's like the stuff is written in multiple languages on the menu and it gets a little complex. Yeah. Uh, if you really want to have the best user experience per language, they get their own menu. Yeah. And uh, and maybe the person talking to him can can speak in that language or whatever. Um, talk to us about translation and WordPress, like the translators, the people that um, contribute, particularly to the uh, free open source plugins and WordPress core itself. How do how do translators make the magic happen uh, for all the different languages, not just on the front end of the website, but how the admin screens look and everything else? Yeah, you you mean you like to translate WordPress.org uh, um, area, right? The, the, yeah. How WordPress is translated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lucky, lucky you. You're currently speaking to a locale manager. So, so okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm very deep in exactly this this area. I just want to make sure that like, um, should I now bore you for like ten minutes about that? So um, so the best, the the most important thing that uh, people uh, might not know is first, everybody can help. Really, I mean that. Everybody who speaks more than one language, even like several um, uh, instances of English, they can also help translate this uh, English in English variant uh, for other people. And um, the most important thing is um, that translations are um, reviewed. So um, that's why um, you just imagine like, why can I, when I, when everybody can contribute, so I can go in there and 
post my affiliate link for a translation for like some weird language because nobody understands this and goes like, yeah, sure, that string is fine. No, you have really like, um, uh, we. I think we currently have, oh, like rough guess. I was not looking at that for a long time. 60 to 80 languages active in WordPress, let's say 60-ish. Um, like I totally get like messages maybe right now from other people going like, mm -hmm. hey, that was the wrong number. So it's really about like the... Um, active and not so active languages and um and translating a plugin and a seam and like core is basically all the same thing so we have an interface we have a software called glotpress which is installed um as a solution on translate.wordpress.org and in that you can select the language and then you can or you can select the plugin and then you can help like um, contribute to this plugin if you speak another language and then someone from this language needs to review that that's why you have some languages where you have more strings to review as translations because like people has no have no time to review like all the gifts that people giving to this language because nobody yeah. has time to do like the day-to-day the, the -day work because you need to understand the language and then you need to really commit to make sure this this translations also get reviewed and the right translations gets uh, accepted. And if a plugin reaches uh, like 90% translation, um, or like, uh, I think for core, it's a different thing. But if you reach a certain amount of um, translation, like a very high amount, then for this translation, you get um, um, language files created. And this then gets uh, distributed to the users. So, so that's why you have maybe sometimes if you have a multilingual backend, you get a, like update and then you're going like, but like this, no update, no plugin, no seam. And then you have like, oh yeah, the language was updated because mm -hmm. the languages are not connected to the plugins, which was back in the day, like uh, in 2013, when we first discussed like the, the language uh, solution, um, it was like, you need to have a mo Pomo file created as a plugin author, have someone ship you translations that you can add to your zip file to your WordPress.org uh, distribution um, system. And then when you had a new version out, you distributed like all the transla translation files. So you have like half the translation because the people that give you the translations were not having the current version. So that's why we simply disconnected this uh, a translation system while having like the translation running on wordpress.org and translate wordpress.org for the wordpress.org plugins and for the themes and for core and then having like the 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 files like the the plugin files like not having any translations with them on wordpress.org to be able to um, simply be updated besides having the having the uh, translations done by um, by the translators that's awesome is there anything that you would recommend for like a plugin author to encourage translation or to, to, you know, recruit people or incentivize or. Yeah, we... So yeah. there's a very easy, the first step is like check the translation page of your plugin. Like if you're on WordPress org, there is like this plugin can be translated or whatsoever. And then you can jump over. And if it's all red and there is like, this plugin is not able to be translated. Yeah, guess why you don't have any translations because you did not do the work. And the other thing is like, there is a there is in the plugin handbook is a, um, is a chapter for um, um, internationalization. So um, because I saw plugins where they were like, yes, my plugin is ready. And I was like, how can you, how can someone translate this string? Yeah, it was in the JavaScript. And like you can also translate JavaScript stuff because like so many things right now are in JavaScript for any some weird reason. I don't know why. But um, there are so many stuff now happening in JavaScript. And so um, you also need to give this translation like to the WordPress system uh, to like to be able to call it in PHP. There's like a whole chapter in the like you don't like don't listen to me. Like just go to the translation handbook and and to the um, plugin handbook and search for internationalization. You have there the translation uh, like the how can you do the JavaScript files, and then you can simply use in JavaScript like this uh, variables where you pull these translations in, and so the, like the first the first like uh, tip is to make sure your plugin is translatable. And the second thing is like check if you're already having check your um, maybe you already know the users you're having. You maybe have them in the WordPress plugin direct uh, in the plugin directory in the support forums 
or you or they already might have already do, done translations. So see if you can find them. Maybe you can say to them like, thank you for doing my plugin. You might also have a premium version going like, or you tell your premium users like, hey, you can get a free version, for example, if you help us translate these things. Just be aware. If you have random people showing up at translations, they can just submit like um, ideas of translations. So you should like see if you have people who already have translation credits or they simply onboard themselves to the community. There's like even a style guide for different languages where people can simply understand how to translate a language. Sounds weird. I know you're going like, but I speak this language. Are you also in writing? You are hundred percent sure you know how to write in your language, like coming from a German, like even I'm going like, I might be not hundred percent correct with I, what I translate there. Um, but that's why I just like do the locale part and empower people and not doing my translation by myself um, all the time. I do that sometimes. But um, the point is really you have the um, you have different um, style guides for things in WordPress. And there's even a glossary, because if you think you know what posts means in your language, are you sure? That's the WordPress way of translating things, because one very important thing for people to understand is for a normal user, the whole backend looks like one thing. So if they stumble onto a very weird translation of a normal word in WordPress, posts, pages, and someone translates this for like a word that they totally mean, that is the perfect way to describing that. If you want to write about like someone in your plugin needs to do something in posts, and then you use the not translated, the, the not right glossary word for that, you confuse users and they think it's all one thing that they are in and not like having a software stitched together by like 50 plugins. That makes sense. Well, thanks for taking us on a tour of that. I want to clarify for the audience, um, you mentioned the multi-site approach. And I just want to make sure, are you referring to WordPress multi-site or yes. just multiple websites? And no, no. can you ex explain the difference there for people who don't know what multi-site is? Yeah. Um, thank you for this question. I, I love this question. Um, so, the, um, so the difference is that um, multi-site is a core feature since WordPress 3.0. And before that, it was a fork. So it's a very, very stable feature in WordPress. It's not a new thing, just that like nobody... like very little people know that that mean it is a, it's a it's a it's a it's a feature that is not stable because you see it right now working on a site called wordpress.com so that is a multi site basically and uh, what it means is that um you can have different um instances on one installation so they all share like the same code base but they are um uh, different sites so what they, the only thing that they are sharing is users so every every um, site in the multi-site has their own options, user uh, options, posts, comments, pages, uh, and like custom post types, WooCommerce products, and so on, um, and um, Lifter LMS uh, um, 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 courses there. <laughs> um, and so um, uh, this is the this is the um, a base feature of WordPress that everybody could enable on their WordPress site. Um, there is like a thing with plugins that some plugins are so horribly written that they have problems with multi-site. That doesn't mean multi-site is weird. It's just like the plugins do not care how to write real, like write code. They're just going like, yeah, like this works on my machine. Why should it not work on your machine? And so um, um, normally um, like um, plugins are ready for that. Um, they are just some some horrible like five bucks plugins on some site that are like not dealing with that because never thought of, nobody thought about um, having this feature on, which again is a core feature since version 3.0. And if everybody currently guesses which year 3.0 was, congratulations, you are old. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh just to explain it using the wordpress.com example. So wordpress.com is a website, but you can get a free uh, a free plan on there and they have other plans as well. So, but you get your own URL. It's like chris.wordpress.com if you sign up and you get your own and then you can map a custom domain if you want to or whatever. But what is actually shared 
between all the sites? Is it is there really just like one WordPress instance for all of that? Like in terms of the, com, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's yes, it's a, it's a, technically a little bit more. Like they even, for example, they use a system uh, where they not all be in one database because that would be insane. Like to have like yeah. millions of database tables in one ta in one database. So right. um, they use a system to um, to split this over multiple database servers, and mm -hmm. they even can have like there is a like this is like open source you can like watch it you can even install it on on your on your site like it just makes sense if you really are going like scale into, into the top numbers of like over a few hundred sites if you plan with that then yeah. you would probably look into look into a uh, um, uh, ludicrous db or hyper db is the name of the plugin um ludicrous i don't I've totally butchered the name of the plugin there. Uh, it's that's from JJJ, I think. And HyperDB is a is a one from Automatic, and they simply like split the databases um, um, of the users, and so um, you then simply like um, reroute the queries to those um, to those um, databases, and that you can simply have exactly the same installation part like for ground base, and then you can scale from that. But I think they also do a little bit more like tricks in there at wordpress.com but i think the base system is a normal multi-site awesome tell us about your agency imp snide uh like what is it what do you guys special in specialize in what could people uh find over there yeah so we are an enterprise agency which like sounds okay what does it mean so we work we are 130 people we were founded in like 2006 and we were founded out of the WordPress community in Germany. So we were like the people who are in um, the German community and like the, the moderators of the German community. And then we were like, um, um, let's try a business. And now I'm here. Um, <laughs> and, the, uh, and that's why we are 100% remote. Because when you start a forum, you're not going like, and we meet at 7 p.m. at this part in the in the city so that's why we were all remote and we like then simply kept it that way so all our 130 plus people are like distributed over the over the world because we have like um like the like the big, biggest brands on the planet as our clients um and for example for um we do um also woocommerce uh, site we also do woocommerce plugins so we are the official um, vendor like the official agency helping paypal molly and payoneer for their uh, woocommerce plugins and uh, and for the uh, for the agency um like um like sites we for example sap um the new site uh, we are doing there and then the other names i cannot tell you because like i cannot even tell you the industry they are in because your second guess most likely would be already a hit, so so that's why we are just like one of the one of the uh, enterprise agencies um, um, in the market, and um, yeah, we are helping our clients since a very long time with WordPress. Just to give back to the agency folks folks watching out there, how does one move to the enterprise space? Like, if somebody wants to start to try to work with clients and grow their agency into enterprise, what should they do first? Um, have a time machine. Um, yeah. <laughs> so because like the, um, the, the problem is it's very, it's, it's um, like, it's not a, it's not a totally crowded space there, but you really need to um, convince your um, client that you can make it. So that you can really, uh, um, like, really um, deliver that. And one of the things that we um, that we um, did in the early years, we simply, like, simply, it sounds weird. We raised our price. So okay. with that, uh, before that, we we might look cheap to some uh, bigger clients, and we were like adjusted, like, just a few people. And then we raised our price and with that, like also raised our conf confidence going like, yes, we can do those projects. Because if you want to, if you, for example, when we were like focusing on the, on the German market there and, um, and they were like, we were like going like, yes, we know WordPress. Like, yes, we, because we are the people from the community. So when someone knows how to do WordPress and ex exactly like multi-site was a thing for us, that was like a normal thing we are using in projects. Like even the German WordPress German needs page was a multi-site 
before it was a multi-site. It was multi-user uh, was the fork for that. So we were really confident that we can deliver those things. And then when we had conversations with um, with bigger clients, and we were more than a few people, like one, two, three, more than that, then we really could um, um, tell them like we have the confidential. We, we know how what to do. We we are con confident in that. We know um, we know WordPress really good because you see over there. So um, and even with, with that, like over the years, um, there is um, there is a um, there is a thing called WordPress VIP. As I already mentioned, that that was the hosting the hosting system that a hosting uh, provider that uh, the White House um, choose. Um, when you are someone really active in the ecosystem, then there is a way to um, be recognized. So WordPress uh, VIP came towards us um, in I think in 2015 or 16. Um, because they were like, um, hey, we know, we see what you're doing. You're doing good for the ecosystem. So, so we are visible. We were doing good work. And they were like, uh, we would like to for, for you to, to join us as an as a, as a agency. So then we became a part of a WordPress um, a VIP as a VIP agency for, for, for Automatic. And they also then brought us like bigger clients and also brought us multilingual clients because that was the like the niche that we really could help um, um, WordPress VIP delivering towards the clients because you, they have like global brands that have like local um, markets and that's where multilingual comes into place and we like know this field of work very much. That's awesome. So that's Robert Windish. He's from impside.com. That's I N P S Y D E.com. Also, check out multilingualpress.org. That's where it's at. Thanks for coming on the show, Robert. And thank you for taking us on a tour of how to think about multiple languages and what our options are and sharing your experience with us today. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure.